hope you're all well and safe and healthy and your families too and the lockdown's not been as harsh as it has been to some of us uh, 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 today as well, another uh, effort to bring uh, to you authentic experiences from the outdoors. And uh, today we have a couple of, uh, uh, you know, two epics in complete contrast to each other. And uh, we are uh, going to start uh, with uh, with one in the northwest. Uh, uh, it's it's a lovely uh, region, uh, and it's got an even more magical name, uh, Zanskar. Uh, you know, in a land of uh, full of spectacular sights and an already famous name, Ladakh, it is easy to overlook a hidden wonder. You know, a gorge cut by mighty uh, river as it carves its way through the through the gorge of uh, the entire Zanskar range. It's a deep canyon with 3,000 foot high cliffs falling sheer into into the river below. Pathless, remote, very forbidding. Uh, until recent years, it was known uh, only to the Zanskari people who, uh, you know, viewed it with the with same sort of awe as you would might a prize bull, a magnificent but dangerous uh, necessity. Uh, and in the in the long winter months, uh, you know, the passes over the mountains in the Zanskar range are blocked by snow, and the entire district is cut off from the rest of Ladakh. Uh, the only link to the outside world, um, you know, down this Grand Canyon is. Uh, is walking on the frozen ice uh, as the river runs below, uh, which is itself a cold, arduous, uh, perilous four-day trek. Uh, uh, so it's uh, there. There are two ways to really see the wonders of the inner inner gorges. Uh, uh, either you do the walk in winter, or you do the summer um, uh, descent down uh, the canyon. Uh, the earlier exploration uh, of uh, the Zanskar Gorge. Uh, was, was contested between the Brits and, the, and an Austrian-German uh, team in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, the Austrians uh, claimed that they had finished a couple of days before the British team, but the British team went to the press a little earlier. So uh, that still stands sort of disputed. Uh, there have been, I'll ask Sumer to pull up this, this photo, I'll share this, uh, uh, this little uh, anecdotal story from the earlier uh, expeditions. Uh, this is an SOS. Uh, so, Meru, can we have that yes, picture? Just putting it up. Yeah. So uh, there was uh, there was a there was a Tiger Mountain trip in the 80s, I think, uh, and uh, they had had a flip on the Zanskar, and there were people scattered all over the canyon oh, for about three days. And uh, during one of our trips. Uh, this is a place which is called the Constriction. I see a few of uh, you on, on the show uh, have been to the Zanskar and you remember the Constriction Rapid. It's the crux of the Zanskar where the whole river squeezes into a 12 foot wide gap. And uh, we had stopped there for a scout and somebody had gone for a wee. And as he turned back, we found the SOS that that group in the 80s had left. This was an SOS for a helicopter to come fish them out of the gorge. And uh, so, yeah, it's an old photograph, but if you look uh, carefully, that that is an SOS uh, um, that we found. I still have that photograph, and it just reminds you of, uh, you know, the whole daunting nature of this region that uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, uh, I have uh, with me uh, somebody who I've had the pleasure of uh, descending both these uh, rivers that uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, uh, Vikram Achanta, Chanti as we call him, he stumbled into entrepreneurship in 2000 when he started Tallyho.com, not to be mistaken with Tallyho, um, with quickly vanished dot-com dreams of sitting Mai Tais on a beach, much like a lot of you here today. Um, he's been well mired since then running Tallyho, a beverage education and consulting firm. He also writes uh, travel and beverages, runs amateurly and hosts quizzes. Uh, he fulfilled a long-held desire to raft the Zanskar in 2013. And having survived that, I was lucky to have joined him on the Siang in 2016. And, um, and we have Sumeru, who's, uh, who's a head of content. And you, everything that you see is done by him. He's, uh, he's going to be talking about a different access into Zanskar. So between both of them, they're going to guide you down a, a visual experience uh, uh, that, uh, that only the gold of the Zanskar can, can offer. Chanti, Sumeru, it's all yours. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. So I did the Zanskar back in 2016. And uh, it was one of those rare expeditions where we actually started from Srinagar instead of 
uh, most of you who are here would have done from Leh to Leh. So we did Srinagar and proceeded upwards and went deep into Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, so I'll talk a bit on that, what my experience was like. So uh, going back a bit, uh, I've been, so I first went to Silver Sands. A lot of you might remember that when I was a young kid, uh, 10, 12 year old back in the early 2000s, 2004, 5 and 6, before shifting to Bangalore. And uh, I really got along well with Ranaji, Jitu, had joined much later, but all the Gadwali guides. So initially I wanted to become a, a river guide. And that's what a lot of those, uh, uh, the friends that I made, uh, Akutera uh, people, uh, pushed me on to. But later on, I went to Bangalore and stayed there for about close to 10, 12 years. And suddenly had a reconnect uh, with Weber. Uh, almost after 10 years and went on the Alaknanda with a great bunch of people. I think one is here, uh, Dharmesh. Uh, after that, I got, really got hooked on. I was also playing golf on the national circuit at that time and uh, doing a bit of digital stuff to keep that funding. Uh, post that, I again came back a year later, uh, did a couple of days down the uh, Ganga. Uh, Camp Aquatara was up, Silver Sands uh, had shifted up there, Atali had come up. Uh, and just before I knew it, uh, I was on full time from 2016, working with Weber at Aquaterra with all those folks, uh, though I was doing it remote. And just last year, I decided to shift towards Dehradun, uh, so I could devote more time and it's closer to the base as well. Uh, so I'll take you through a video which I shot in 2016. I'll start sharing my screen. And I won't talk much for the next couple of minutes. You can see what the expedition was like. Uh, so can you all see my screen, however? All right, so I'll, I'll start playing this video.
So I hope uh, everyone could see the video loud and clear. Uh, I'll take you through what really transpired in that expedition. Uh, but let me first start off by saying Zanskar isn't something what many people really expect out of a river rafting expedition. You expect a lot of rapids, splashes on your faces when you're on the river. But Zanskar is quite different. And whenever it doesn't really hit you what Zanskar really is till about two or three, four years later, when you start seeing the videos again and start remembering what really happened. Uh, later on, you come to realize, okay, wow, that was an expedition. And there is a feeling with many people that they really want to go back. It's not easy going back there because very few people run this expedition so deep in the Ladakh region. And I wish I could do, I'll do anything possible, especially with this lockdown and what we've seen. We aren't able to travel as freely as we wanted to really go back there and do it once more. So uh, this was a unique expedition. We did it from Srinagar. Uh, and Srinagar is what I think a lot of people have a very big misconception. You see just the Dal Lake, a few uh, gardens which are famous, but it's quite different when you actually go there and start the trip from there. So I'll start from there. So I landed to take a flight from Delhi to Srinagar. Uh, it's either via Jammu or direct. And when you land, I saw uh, Rana, uh, Rana Ji as usual, with his smiling face and little points he had at that time. Uh, so I received a big hug from him and we were waiting for a few couple of hours for all of us, uh, all of our expedition folks to start uh, coming up. So once we were in Srinagar, of course, there were curfews, security was very tight, exactly what we had predicted till now. But once you start getting in the car and start traveling, you start seeing a lot of difference from what you hear in the media. People aren't holding protests all the time there. People aren't, there's, we are, luckily we never saw any violence, but it was very peaceful, very beautiful. And the local people are very friendly. So they've unfortunately been deprived of a huge economy with the tourism industry, not only with this lockdown, but for the last 20, 30 years, taken a big hit with not many people going there. So uh, going on, we proceeded towards Dal Lake. Uh, we spent a night there and we got a ride on the Shikara. And Dal Lake had these beautiful boats, houseboats, and not a single person there. Can you imagine a whole river to yourself with such beauty all around? not a single tourist, very few locals because there are hardly anyone coming. We were the only tourists for this one night over there. Next early morning, we proceeded from uh, Srinagar towards Sonamar, so that's uh, towards Kargil. Uh, so that's about a 200 kilometer drive uh, via Sonamar. And that really starts taking you deep into uh, Kashmir, you see the rugged mountains, a bit of it with the snow as well. Uh, we proceeded to Kargil, we stayed there. The drive is pretty tough. It's quite rugged. There's a lot of it doesn't have roads in between. And by the time you reach your destination, a lot of your body is aching and you just want to lie down and rest. So I'll uh, run through the video again and actually take you, there is a story behind almost every uh, part of it, which I'll, uh, now narrate for a little while. All right, I'll start sharing my screen. All right. so this was our campsite uh, in between. Uh, these you can see, all of our river guides, they were fast asleep. Uh, all of the guests had gone to for a hike. Uh, I was too lazy to ever go on a hike uh, because of my overweight issues, but I was always busy trying to shoot something or the other. Uh, but I don't think anything could be a sleeping spot as beautiful as this. This was en route to uh, the Drangdrung Glacier, the famous one. You see this on the All right. So this rapid is when we start getting into action. The first few days are pretty quiet on the river. Uh, you get a few grade one to two 
or two plus rapids and not much of action uh four day four day five onwards is when you start seeing a lot of uh, rapids in between who are suddenly great three three plus some four as well so this has a good story behind it uh, this is our raft and in the front i would be in the front to kind of control the camera uh, and some of the parts friends want to be that happy because i would always hog the front seat and that's why you see most of the splashes uh, so that's sashi at the back sashi kandash uh, he uh, was a part of our group a good uh, guy from uh, i made friends with i'm in the front that's a great talented photographer chirag sadnani who shot many photographs that's sophi on the left back and arthur on the front all right so we we're going nice and easy till now no problems now here a lot of people don't realize what exactly happens on this rapid because uh i there's a lot of splashes and you don't realize what's going on so this is something we call sashi down and i'll explain it to you why Yeah, is when it starts getting interesting. I'm one in the front, hoping I I've actually never faced any action this side. I've never fallen off a raft. The raft that I've been on has never flipped. And in the 15 years of doing rafting, I've always wished that happened. But here's where it gets interesting. We get a couple of strong waves coming at us. I think there, and this guy's better side. In between, the guide uh, Virinda, he's uh, just about a five four. Trail looking, but very strong uh, Garhwali guy. And if you notice here, there's no one here. In, in the, in the, just behind Virinder, who was our guy. Sashi, he didn't even know it, has fallen off the raft, and he's nowhere to be seen because speed of the water is so quick. You can't really make out what's going. Virinder is struggling uh, to control the oars. And next thing I know. Sashi is nowhere to be found. No one can see him. Uh, about how 30 seconds later, and time passes very quickly on the rapid. Before you know it, something's happened and it's already over. You don't even realize what's going on. Uh, so before we know it, Sashi is floating somewhere towards the flat section, and the raft in front uh, has somehow managed to pull him up uh, with the help of our safety kayakers Rishi and Sanjay, and he's back in. And this was to kind of signify. what he went to uh the cold almost uh, snow cold water uh, down the glacier and this he kind of really did just before we ended the expedition uh, towards the confluence of the banskar and in this uh and then this was uh, one of the weirdest scenes i've ever come across in the 15 years i've been doing rafting uh, we were in ladakh and at that time there was no cell reception uh, now you get pretty good in between uh, we had this lovely uh, folks from mumbai the biyanis and who've been regular guests of factor para this akshay biyani he pulls out a bluetooth speaker starts playing bollywood bhangra tracks in the middle of nowhere wind is really strong this starts dancing Not for two minutes, not for five minutes, for a good half an hour. So that was quite funny, but and something we still remember and laugh upon. Uh, that's where we won the Carter Raft. That's the raft with best view of the sea. All right, so that's. Uh, A waterfall where we stop for lunch, and uh, that's a pretty, pretty beautiful spot. All right, so I'll show you some images. That's one of our campsites. Uh, very beautiful place. We can see the snow as well. Uh, that's the usual lunch spot uh, we had, where we play Uno, uh, some cards. That's another angle of that uh, campsite. This is shot by Weber. 
So it's a great picnic spot. Uh, we would, after a hot day of rafting on the river, uh, spot, uh, stop for lunch. There's a nice waterfall there, and you can have the delicacies prepared by the Aquaterra staff, which is quite still famous for. Uh, that was our group, uh, 16 of us, after the expedition. And you get to also see some really nice, uh, interesting uh, places in between. We go for hikes, so I didn't go on them, uh, but I plan to next time I'm there. Uh, you get to see the monks, the children. This is one of the most beautiful campsites I've come across. Few images from the expedition. This was a fantastic capture by one of our uh, Chirag Sadnani, who was part of our group. This is the hike. They are short hikes, quite uh, easy. Again, a picture of the waterfall. Some action on the river. All right. After this, we end at the confluence uh, of the Zanskar and Indus. Uh, we head back to Leh after that. And uh, it's, we spend another day or two before proceeding back to uh, your home destinations. You normally take a flight back to Delhi. But Leh is another nice place. You get to spend a day or two there. Uh, you get to try the local restaurants, which are some lovely Tibetan and uh, other food. So I'll uh, now start passing this on to uh, Vikram, who has done this expedition before me on the uh, 2016. Uh, and Ranjan, to ask your question, yes, the construction, Vic uh, uh, Vikram will be covering that. Uh, so I'll give this to Vikram. Vikram, you're oh, Yeah, I'm live. Yeah. Thanks, Meru. Can everybody hear me? All good? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Sumeru. Thanks, Weber. Uh, Sumeru, if you can shift to my uh, photo folder, please, and just yeah. pull the first photo up. Uh, Weber, I'm going to rely on you off the river also as my safety raft. Yeah. Absolutely. Happy and, to have uh, I've got some safety kayakers also with me. I've got uh, uh, Addy, and I don't know whether Sid is on board or not, but uh, Addy and Sid rafted this Siang Zanskar in 2015, this Siang in 2016 with me. Get the screen on one second. Cool. And Anu and the, uh, hi Anu. Uh, Anu and Mahathi did the Siang in 2016 with me. And uh, so Meru, a quick shout out in, in response to your, the thing about never falling off a raft, be careful what you wish for sometimes. <laughs> I'm actually wishing it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, be careful, be careful. Uh, so just a quick flip back to my rafting journey, really it began in 1998. I had a company offsite in Rishikesh with uh, Snow Leopard Adventures. A bunch of us, I was working in IBM at that point in time. Um, and uh, it was fabulous because Ajit Pajaj from Snow Leopard was, he was hobbling around camp at that time uh, with an injury from previous expedition. So we had, a, we had a chance to chat and talk about rafting in general. So we can just move on, please. Yeah, just a second, yeah. I'm getting Siddharth on. Yeah. Yes. So it was lovely, just the, the Ganga at that point in time, back in, in the late 90s, uh, jumping off the rock. I don't know what that, Weber, can you just still jump off that rock now? Or is it forbidden? Uh, uh, well, uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, the uh, Ganga has become a dam released river. So they have two dams, yeah. at Chandigarh and uh, Tehri. And uh, so with the fluctuating release, water release, there's been, um, there's been a couple of sandbars that have been, uh, you know, forming. Okay. And there have been a couple of injuries, so not recommended anymore. So you were lucky to do it okay. when you did. Yeah, this was back then, yeah. And uh, just body surfing in the Ganga. Next pick, Sameru, thanks. Yeah. Uh, and th 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 that campsite is absolutely tied to the Ganga with, the, with the, the mountains above you. So finally, I think I, I took, my, took my wife back to the rafting trip in the early years of 2000s. And that's when I first... Uh, realized or found out about multi-day multi expeditions on some of the big rivers in India, one of which was the Zanskar. I'd never heard that name before. And the Zanskar just sounded like, you know, 
like a watering hole for the gods, somewhere, somewhere where the gods would come down to have a drink or chill with a beer or with a, a gin and tonic like Weber was having. Uh, so I was fascinated by, by the Zanskar as a name. And uh, I got onto Aquaterra's uh, spam list, as probably most of you are on. <laughs> well done, Weber. Thank you. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how many mails I got till I finally succumbed one year in 2014. And I figured that there were three or four of us college buddies who were of the same uh, disposition. So that's Addy on the left who's on the, who's on the webinar too. Uh, that's me next to him, uh, Wani and Sujoy. So Addy, me and Sujoy signed up first and we realized later that Wani was also part of the trip. So we arrived, uh, we arrived in, in Leh and uh, Sumeri, you've got the order. I'm not sure you got the order right or not. Uh, sorry. Uh, we should have the order from Leh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so just the, the Leh photo shot. So acclimatizing in Leh for a day or two. And that's the group of us at the Mogol just before heading out on the bus. If you can move to the group shot, please. Yeah, thanks. So that's Mihir, uh, the owner of the Mogol Hotel. That's me, Sujoy. Can I get back to the group shot, uh, Samir? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Sujoy, Doc and Sid from Ajmer, uh, Gaurav and Nidhi from Gurgaon, Adi from Bombay, Wani from Gurgaon. Will, I don't know where Will was from, somewhere in England, I think. A 17 year old boy just bumming around India. Yeah, and uh, Hema, from Noida, Neha from uh, Bombay, and uh, most interestingly, Matt, who was a bush pilot in Indonesia. He used to fly these small planes all around the Indonesian islands, delivering the mail, I think. Uh, fabulous guy. So after acclimatizing, we were on the road uh, from, from Leh, and we did the Leh Kargil trip. Yeah, so if you could just move on to... Uh, yeah, we had the... One second. Yeah. yeah. The confluence, that's number two. number two. That's the confluence, the Sangam of the Indus and the Zanskar. Uh, moving on, obligatory group pictures on the way. Four or five of us. What's life without a selfie, right? Yeah. Uh, we've got the Suru River coming up after that. And just the vistas were completely stunning. Just, you know, on and off the road. Uh, and I think part of the magic of the whole trip was the, this, this, the, the journey of getting to uh, a jumping off point of Ramallah was the magical part, I mean, apart from the rafting course. But the, the hardship of those two days in Leh acclimatizing and then those three days we spent on the, uh, the vistas that unfolded were completely stunning. So maybe you can move on. Right. Uh, you can see pictures like that. Uh, we've got some local flora and fauna. I don't know. What animal? That, that's a, a mountain goat? Yeah, it's, it's the domesticated uh, goat from Kasha. Did we eat it by any chance? No, we did not. <laughs> Skipping on budget, Weber. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and obviously, what's, what's a road trip without a group pick? Uh, that's the bunch of us somewhere along the way. I don't know where. I, I don't know what's in the background precisely. So that's, uh, that's and the 7,000 meter hike noon right behind you, Chandi. That's noon behind us. Okay. Yeah. And then we've got um, a monastery and moving on to, we've got Lama Yuru after that. Another one. We've got a, a pick of Lama Yuru. And uh, then some truly stunning landscapes, which I think were called the, the moonlands, right, Weber? The moonlands or the moonscape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just around. Uh, around Lao. And uh, then of course, moving on from there into, into village life, uh, kids by the road, uh, web of scaring some kids also. Mm. Yeah, the next. Yeah. What are you doing to them, web of? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sujai and Sid just chilling by the side uh, with the upstream. And then let's get back to number nine and 10. Yeah. Uh, no place like the top of a bus when you're out there and the, the weather was absolutely pristine. It, it was nice and nice and chilly. And we had one large rickety bus in which we were all fitted. So quite in contrast to the, to the Siang from a trip perspective, both in terms of the landscapes uh, and in the Siang, because the road conditions, et cetera, we were in like 
a Jeep convoy which took us throughout from start to finish. And here we had uh, the luxury, I would say, of, of being all together in a bus. Uh, Sid was our gadget man, so we had his iPod plugged into the, uh, I don't know how he did that, but he plugged his you know, iPod into the music system of the bus, so we had his music, uh, his music to listen to. And uh, yeah, we can move on, Sameru. That's Nidhi in a village near Kargil with a bunch of kids there. And uh, we finally sight a yak in the wild. Yeah. Okay, we can move on. And uh, Weber, is that the Nunkun Massif again? Uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the climb onto Pensila. So this is uh, close okay. to the origins of the, uh, the Suru River. And you're climbing right. to the left of the photograph towards the Pensila. Right. And I just remember this massive sheet of ice coming down from the... Uh, from the peaks. It's uh, like a murky, dull gray, black gray sheet of ice. Uh, and we were just kind of right across the road from that. You can move the next pic, Smero, uh, with the noon cone, with the uh, back in the, in the background of us. So just, that, just, I think that was the whole beauty of the trip, right? The, the accessibility to nature, the fact that we were within, you know, shouting distance or touching distance, or some of these most amazing sites, which, uh, which I really never ex expected really as a part of the trip per se. And that was day two of the road, of the road trip. Uh, moving on from there, we got to Rangdum and that's all of us huddled in a tent. Uh, I don't remember how we all fit into that particular tent, but that was quite something. Uh, and I, so I'll be running a quiz for you in between the two trips, between Zanskar and Siang. So a small quiz. And this is the first time on the trip that I did a small quiz for for everybody, it was hard to make my voice heard above the wind roar uh, at Rangdum. Uh, can you move the next pic, Samero? That's at the plane at Rangdum. And we got Adi, Wani, and, and Sid. And uh, Adi, uh, who's an amateur photographer who took a lot of the pictures which I've been, I've been showing you, he had this uh, desire to win this Nat Geo competition. So he had this copy of Nat Geo, which he was getting people to hold up in all kinds of crazy places. And this was the winning pick for Nat Geo, which got him uh, some crazy prize. And it's supposed to get me a year's subscription for Nat Geo, which I never got finally, Adi. Adi, you want to talk about the, your Nat Geo pick? Uh, Sumeru, can you unmute Adi? Aditya Narayan? Yes, Vic. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on. Aditya, I'm on. Yeah, Adi. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think with all such trips, uh, I think you always need to have a little bit of a specific objective beyond uh, the trip itself, right? So I think the one thing that uh, I had picked on was trying to win this Nat Geo Traveler uh, best photo shot, um, uh, you know, for the month. Uh, and basically what we did was uh, we, we had one copy of this Nat Geo uh, and at almost every spot that we either stayed at or we stopped, uh, we had someone holding it and then a, get a picture as background uh, and me trying to get a decent snap. So we really clicked a hell of a lot simply because of that. Uh, uh, this was the one that won, but there were lots of there were lots of other uh, photographs that turned out actually pretty nice for the reason that we were trying to win this. Uh, and eventually, this uh, actually won, uh, 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 you know, whatever the photo for the month. Now uh, we have Neha and Vani in this, so obviously they've also moved up a notch given that uh, they modeled for this. Uh, but I think the tragedy of it all was that we won this, but at the end of the day, in the process of passing this around, this magazine around, uh, I effectively lost it. So we don't really have a copy of that uh, winning magazine. And as Chanti just said, uh, uh, the, the, the prize was actually not that dramatic. It was a subscription to a uh, Nat Geo for three years, which I... Uh, uh, very dutifully handed over to Chanti, but effectively, I think he, we never got it. But at the end of the day, I think it got us a lot of very, very nice photographs uh, and a little bit of extra to do beyond the regular hard work that we were doing. You know, my own viewers, Adi was just trying to figure out an excuse to take photographs of the, of the women on the trip, and this fitted in perfectly with his agenda. So all the rest was a cover up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but Chanti, all I can say is there were lots of photographs of men also, including uh, when almost the entire lot, you somehow didn't make that cut for reasons we can we can debate later. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, thanks, Adi. Thanks. Uh, Sumeru, let's move on. All right.
Yeah, so from Rangdum, we, uh, Rangdum was a, uh, a great experience. So camping out in the plain there, really bitter winds. And Rangdum took us finally to Ramala. Uh, so Ramala was our jumping off point for the Stod River, which would take us then onto the Zanskar. And uh, Ramala was our, our campsite, really finally by the side of the river where we would kit out. That's a small bridge at Ramala across the river. Uh, that's Mihir Vasabda from Mumbai. And uh, yeah, if we can move on. So up till then, we were living in fairly fair luxury in the sense that our campsites would be set up and stripped down by the Aquatera team. And Ramallah is, is when the action began and the onus was, was really on the rafters to start doing some work for themselves. So we learned how to, uh, first we had these dry bags with us. So that red bag you see was two to a person and everything which we had went into the dry bag, which we needed to carry along on the trip. And the rest of the stuff got sent back to uh, to lay really on a cam on a camper. Uh, we pitched our tents at Ramallah, and then we stripped down our tents. So that would be our routine across the trip. Uh, next, pick please, Sumeru. So that's the uh, the twelve of us. I think somebody else was taking the pick at that point in time. All kitted out in our wetsuits, our wet boots, our helmets, uh, paddles, etc. All, all ready to hit, to hit the river, yeah. And that river was one cold river, man. Even though it was August, I, I was scared of getting into that river. I think wetsuit or no wetsuit, there probably would have been some risk of hypothermia. Weber, what would, what would the temperatures have been in the river? Uh, so uh, the Zanskar uh, river temperatures are uh, about ten odd Celsius. So yes, uh, you don't want to be in the water for too long. Uh, oh, for too even, long, right. yeah. Right. And I remember that just before lay, we were uh, the last rapids before we were hitting uh, our final stretch on the river. We were told by one of the, the safety, by one of our rafters, that there was a case of hypothermia possibly at some point before, and somebody had had died also. Mm -hmm. Close to lay. Okay, so that ended the road trip part of the of the journey, and one hell of a trip. Uh, so maybe we can shift folders to the uh, the river on and off the river. And we can start from uh, just in sequence. Got my name. Uh, no. Uh, I think you've got 4A as the start, possibly. 4A, yeah. Right. That's the start. Cool. Uh, so we started our actual rafting journey on the start, uh, which would then go on to merge into the Zanskar or become the Zanskar. And the it was day one and day two were fairly peaceful. So I'd say grade two, grade three plus rapids, but the vistas, if, if uh, I'm sure a lot of people would have seen Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. So that scene at the end of Fellowship of the Ring where Frodo is floating out into this gorge. And it was just like that gorge from Lord of the Rings. And it just, it just captured that, uh, that moment for me. Uh, we can move on, Sumeru, to the rafting fix. So that's rafting on the on the start. Moving on from there, we can quickly shift switch to these pictures. Uh, Addy bummed a ride on Webberg's raft at some point early on when we were still not into rapid action. Yeah, you can move on, uh, Sumeru. The 4D, cool. And uh, our first halt really was at uh, at Karsha. Sumeru, if you move to 5A. And I think one highlight for me really between, in terms of contrast between the Zanskar and the Siang, uh, both the expedition and the rivers was the sheer climatic conditions which contrast both places. In Zanskar, we never knew what to expect. One day was so different from the other. Siang was, was absolutely stunning uh, uh, from a Vista perspective and, and weather-wise, but the Zanskar was, was challenging. And that's how Karsha was. So Karsha, we landed into a sandstorm pretty much. So it took us about an, an hour to settle down from that sandstorm. We were setting up our tents, unpacking our, our stuff, setting up our loot tents, our dry pits, uh, all of that going on. And it was just blowing like at gale speed. Uh, Karsha was also beautiful. Uh, again, the Zanskar in contrast to the Siang gave you the option to do these day trips. So next time you must do the day trips. So these small hikes, which took you 
from point A to point B. And this was not a really a small hike, but we went to the Karsha Gompa. Uh, you can move on from there, submit it on the pics. Of yours again, again, uh, I guess. So everybody loves the poser. Then we got Vani with one of the monks there. Uh, Vani's teaching him Mohini Atam, maybe. Uh, that's me at Karsha. Uh, then we got Will and Neha again at Karsha. Addy is uh, blowing in the wind at Karsha. You can see the sandstorm behind him. And there you can see the, uh, the dry pits or the loose, again, which are flapping in the breeze uh, of the sandstorm. So that was day one where we camped at, at, uh, at Karsha and we moved on from there. Uh, so day two again gave us the, the luxury. From a rafting perspective, it was fairly peaceful, but we had this lovely walk to a, a Ladakhi homestay managed by the, the Snow Leopard Conservancy. Weber, you want to talk about the Snow Leopard Conservancy or what they do? Uh, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a conservation program, uh, you know, to help the snow leopard thrive in, in, the, in the winter times. Uh, when food is typically uh, running short, all the the, uh, the food resources uh, are, are really low. There's uh, uh, the the animal comes down to to lower sort of levels. There's so there's sort of inherent conflict between you know man and uh, and so-called the, the big cat because there's cattle involved and you know so it's it's sort of delicate uh, balance. And of course now right. with the snow leopard sort of tourism that happens in the winter. Uh, that is uh, that that is uh, certainly helping uh, you know bring focus. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that was a lovely walk to that uh, to that village, that homestay, and having the the tea there. You can move on, uh, Sumeru. So just more shots of of camping by the side of the river. Some of this are from Sumeru's trip. So maybe you can move on quickly for those possibly, the ones which we don't need to repeat. Uh, yeah. So our daily routine, pretty much for those of you who haven't been on the river, really, we used to get up around 5.30, 6 o'clock and breakfast was served by around 7, 7.15 and we're expected to be packed and ready by 7.45. So we hit the river between 7.45 and 8 o'clock. So it was a pretty tight ship which was run by the Aquaterra outfit. Uh, very disciplined, kept us completely in line and uh, I think we probably might have left some people behind on the beach now and then. Did we ever, ever leave somebody behind? If they didn't catch up. Absolutely. <laughs> <Just to talk. laughs> we pack lunch. <laughs> pack lunch, yeah. Okay, so maybe you can move on. Uh, and typically we'd spend about, say, four to five hours on the river, rafting on the river. Uh, break by around 1.30, 2 o'clock for lunch if we didn't have a spot in between. And given that the sun was setting so soon, most importantly, the bar would set up by around 5, 5.30. So Chakna would be out. Uh, that's Sujoy at the bar. Uh, he wasn't manning the bar, just posing for the pick. <laughs> yeah, so the bar, the bar would be up and we'd be, sunset would be by around, we'd be lights out by around 9.30, 10. We might have a drink or two after dinner, possibly also by the side of the river. And I never really had a hangover really. I mean, I run a company called Tadliho and I, I don't have a, have a very high tolerance for, for alcohol. Uh, but I, I had so much old monk on that trip and Weber's one, one main instruction was don't run out of alcohol. Now, whatever else you do, make sure you don't run out of booze. So uh, Srini's, Srini's uh, question on the, on the group, what was on the bar menu? I think the bar menu was, was mostly old monk. So pretty much dark rum and coke. And we had Khan Singh make us some very good punch at one point. So back on the river, uh, we can get back on the river. Yeah. So back down on the river, ABC, and we were rafting down after that day two, we were rafting down to, uh, to Nirak. That was our next spot, which was a really, well, never mind. Uh, so Meru, if you can move down to 9D, 9G, 9F, just quickly move through the rafting picks. More of the landscape. And I want to take you through uh, so that's us on the boat. That's Neha in front with me. Uh, and if I take you down quickly. Yeah, you can move on. I think you need to move to 11A. 11, 11 11A. So that's, that's a rapid called Spanish fly or dislocate. And I believe it's called Spanish fly because a, a Spaniard apparently flew at some point. He survived, right, Weber? 
Yeah, Spanish. so uh, it was, uh, we, we named it Spanish Fly a few years ago. There was a whole contingent from, uh, you know, the Basque land in Spain. And right. um, and Chus was the guide who, and he dumped everyone on this rapid. Yeah, it's a, it's a new rapid. It's been formed by a big JCB having fallen into the river. Right. The road construction that's happening in the Zanskar. And so that was an app name for, um, for right. Chus's right. little incident there. Ranjan says it was named on his trip. Uh, well done, Ranjan. <laughs> well named. Yeah, I, I believe there was some dynamiting which also led to that uh, that rapid being formed. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, so the way these rapids uh, run, especially the the difficult ones like Spanish Fly, which would be a probably a grade a grade four plus, I would assume, was that and it was especially difficult rapid was not just because the technical complexity, I would imagine, of the rapid itself, but because the fact that the river was running swiftly downstream from there. So just to make sure that the rafters didn't, if by chance we, we flipped the raft, uh, we wouldn't swim down, we wouldn't go downstream. So there could be a cordon set up. So you can see the, the safety kayaker going through uh, Spanish fly. You can take us to 11A, B, C, Sumeru. Yeah, so that's, you can just get an get a image of Spanish fly to the to the eyes of a safety kayaker, what that would feel like, you know, what, what, what he, she or her would be going through at that point. So that's the cordon set up really for Spanish fly. You've got Weber in his scatter raft and a couple of safety kayakers around him. And there were five safety kayakers in all uh, on the Zanskar with us, along with the scatter raft. From a safety perspective, we felt we were pretty well covered. Uh, you can move to the next one. Uh, so Spanish fly, was was one hell of a rapid for our for our trip i think and uh, it really set the stage uh, i would say in a way for the rest of the trip uh, it changed things i would say yeah so uh, moving on from there we camped at nerak and after nerak was lamayuru so nerak is where we we probably hooked up with a bunch of uh, children from in their teens really from england who were on a kayaking expedition on the zanskar they were part of their the coaching. So just from a safety perspective, we said, let's hook up with them. And this was our campsite at, at Lamayuru, where we also had a rest day. Yeah. So you can move on into Lamayuru and Lamayuru because a beautiful waterfall out there. Uh, so a chance for some of us to have a bath also finally. Not me. I think I was okay. I was, but yeah. So that's Lamayuru and some of, some of Sumeru's picks from the trip. So... Post Lamayuru, we moved on to our, our final our final major rapid, I'd say, before we would hit the home stretch towards May, and that was constriction. Yeah, somebody somebody wanted to know about the constriction rapid. So aptly named, it needed a recce again before before the, the rapid itself. Uh, it's called constriction precisely because it's named very literally named, very narrow stretch of how wide would the river be there, Weber, for constriction? Uh, Web of how wide would the wide would the river be at constriction? Can you hear me? One second. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you can hear. Uh, we can hear you, but uh, this is what you Yeah. Uh, Web of Web of how wide is the river at constriction? Yes. Uh, so uh, the river is about uh, 12 feet wide at constriction and the raft is about eight and eight and a half feet wide. And so it's right. got barely enough room to move through. Yeah. Right. And it's right. got, it's got these big features that are called boils, which push you towards the left wall. And that's where boats flip. Right. Yeah. So a very delicate rapid and Ranjan, no, to answer your question, we, uh, thanks be to God, we didn't flip in constriction. We had enough, enough, enough excitement for one trip, I think. Uh, so we can move on through constriction. You can get a picture of the of the rapid itself, and these are kind of Lord of the Rings imagery again. Uh, the kind of gorges that we went through with constriction. Yeah, and there we are at constriction. Finally, breaking through constriction. Uh, it was and uh, somebody celebrating the the end of the trip. Not us. We were celebrating too. And uh, finally, we come to the end of the trip. Yeah, so that's us uh, in our wetsuits by the side of the side of the river. Last time in our wetsuits before we don back into our normal, change back into our normal clothes, and uh, headed back to lay for one final dinner 
and our flights back to wherever we came from. So I, uh, it was, it was, I think a one of a kind trip. And if you, if you ask me between the two rivers, between the Zanskar and the Siang, uh, the Zanskar is one river I would definitely go back to uh, from the sheer experience perspective in it. Yeah. So uh, we come to the end of the Zanskar expedition and I have a quick short quiz for you, which uh, we'll play uh, between the Zanskar and the Siang. Yeah, Ranjan, I agree. Siang also beautiful and unique, no doubt. Uh, and we had, I think, an amazing bunch of people on both the rivers. Both the WhatsApp groups are thriving. Uh, our WhatsApp group, for some reason, is called Z for Zanskari Apple. I don't think I ever ate a Zanskari Apple, so I don't know why we're called that. Uh, uh, all good? Ready for the quiz? Vikram, should yeah, I start okay. it or would you like to do it? So go ahead and share the quiz. All right. So I've got 10 questions for you. Uh, you can put it I'll take a look. And the first, the top, top everybody answers the question gets a, a hat for a MacBet era. And maybe a 10% discount on the next expedition. <laughs> uh, not this, yeah, cool. Okay, let's go. Is this the correct one? Uh, no, the, before that, before that. Yeah. So I don't think Aquadara has got there yet, but where would you be at Saddle Peak? If you were on Saddle Peak, where would you be? Anybody got an answer? Which part of India would you be with Saddle Peak? Addy, you have an answer? Not Wellington? Uh, it's not Wellington. Yeah, you can get the chat window up. Dungeon not, 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 not Arunachal. Not, not that, not Arunachal, Ranjan. It's somewhere Aquatera hasn't been yet, so that's your clue. Uh, okay, it's towards, it's, it's way down south of India. And uh, Andaman Islands, Indra Malik is right. You're, you'll be in the Andamans. So the first cat goes to Indra Malik. Next question, Indra gets a cap. Okay, you'd be quite literally swimming with the sharks if you fall off the raft. So Jacques Cousteau, grandson, Fabian Cousteau, set this raft up, uh, set this uh, submarine, shark-shaped submarine up. So what's the this inspiration for the, for the design and what's the name of the submarine? And we got an answer. Any answers in Sumeru? Yeah, Srinivas saying Aragonaut. Uh, no, uh, not Argonauts. The pick's big enough, Ranjan. I think the shark image should be fairly uh, Let me try and obvious. Zoom in. One second, one second. No, I can't zoom in. Not Jaws, not Sharon, not, no, no, that's wrong to high. Okay, uh, the answer is uh, Red Rackham's Treasure. So that's a Tintin inspired design. Red Rackham's Treasure. And the name of the shark was Troy. Next question. You got the video, Sumeru? Uh, just a second. Uh, the video? No. In that, in that question? No. No, I don't have the video. I okay, just have a question. On. Just move on to the next question then. No problem. Is that Weber on the rescue raft? Damn, no. It's the what ship is that? So part of a legendary expedition. Uh, there are three ships in the picture, which is your clue. That is the Santa Maria Ranger. Well done. That's your hat. The Nina, the Pinto, and the Santa Maria. Christopher Columbus out there discovering America and landing up in the West Indies. Next question. Okay, so why did NASA change their name from Constitution between 72 and 76? So the quiz is all about exploration and discovery. Anybody got an answer? So NASA planned to change the name at Constitution, but the name changed. Any answers, Sameru? No, not so far. Okay, uh, any sci-fi fans out there? Any sci-fi fans? 
there is a uh, shashikant is here she says the answer to the surfing question is puri no it's not puri that was lakshadeep right okay anybody got this okay they changed the name to enterprise because there was a petition launched by star trek fans to change the name to enterprise and nasa accepted that request to change the name from constitution to enterprise so that's why the first space shuttle was called enterprise uh, next question a tribute to aquatara's good food yeah <laughs> on and off the trip <laughs> so that's a nice healthy punch what's the local name of that popular diving spot in the ua it is snoopy well done sahai that's snoopy island snoopy island anupam sahai gets an aquatara cap next question so if you do the tons the sanskar and the zhyang you get this medal now actually you don't get this medal but what would you get this medal for it isn't an aquatera medal what would you get this medal for and we got an answer not snow Are rescue addy climbing all 8000 meters says ranjan no not that's not correct and we got an answer shall i move on not heli skiing for getting the name says sash dash that isn't good enough sash dash okay i got the the answer is you'd be served you serve on the siachen glacier so that's an indian army medal for serving on the siachen glacier uh, next question so which logo which very famous logo of an apparel brand let me give that hint is a stylized version of the mountain monte fitz roy so very famous not north face addy not north face anu so which very famous mountaineering or adventure patagonia patagonia is correct ranjan gets his second cap he is making a collection of aquatera caps next question mar dubki yahan se so where would you be in england if you were at this point So where would you be in England if you were at this point? What is this point called? Not the Giant's Causeway. That's uh, Island uh, Shrinivas. I'm talking about mainland England. But nice guess. So in in England they say the land stretches from John of Groats to. where does the land stretch from lands end ranjan pal gets his third cap <laughs> so that's lands end in england it it actually there, are, there is actually a point called lands end and the last question of my quiz is a site for sora at the end of a river run what spirit is normally in that flask it's not ram shrini nice try not ram brandy is correct adi well done adi gets his first aquadera hat it is brandy yeah <laughs> yeah but they then id ko <laughs> yes absolutely unlike unlike the net zero subscription <laughs> okay uh i'm going to start on the siang now i'm just taking a quick uh, nature nature call yeah. i'll be back in two seconds anyone has uh, any questions as well you can uh, two seconds wrap up give window. me two seconds yes yes absolutely so uh, folks uh, while uh, chanti is off uh, for a break uh, just want to introduce the siang to all of you it's uh, it's a complete uh, it's in complete contrast to what uh, the the landscape and uh, the river that you saw in india's northwest now this is this is this probably has the best rain forest that you're going to see outside of south america it is uh, it is a completely different part of the country uh, even indians need permits to go there um this is a trip that starts in dibrugarh travels up 3 days to the border with china it's a, it's a little place called tuting which means the open place it's where the animistic religion meets the tibetan uh, uh, religion it's a uh, the valley is inhabited by the adi tribes uh, who are hunters and gatherers a uh, great culture uh, live off the land uh, you know worship uh, forces of nature that gods are called donipolo 
Uh, we worship the sun and the moon. The rivers held in great reverence. Uh, some of the greatest exploration in the last century happened in the upper gorges of this river. Uh, the British always wondered where this massive uh, life force uh, comes into India from, and they sent several emissaries were sent up, often captured by uh, Tibetans and kept in exile or in prison or used as slaves. Um, and uh, and some of uh, some of the biggest attempts in the uh, in the outdoor world were, were to charter this this river, which comes across uh, into India as uh, the Yarlung Sanko in Tibet, and uh, it's called Tichiang. And then when it, when it finally enters India near the other border uh, at Geling, it's uh, it's called the Siang. Um, it's still uh, it's still big. In fact, it is bigger than what it is uh, uh, when it starts its journey in Tibet and. Uh, some of the biggest waterfalls in the 20th century found in a river which couldn't be mapped on satellite were found in the inner gorges of uh, the Yarlung Sanko. Uh, so some great reading stuff, we'll post it on the, uh, on the link uh, so you can read about it. And uh, let Chanti take you uh, to the journey uh, of the Siang. Chanti, all yours. Yeah, thanks Rebab. I'm running out of beer though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe we can move to the Siang, the first picture. All right, just a sec. I'll start loading it on. So 2014, we, uh, so who was the winner of the quiz? I think Ranjan Pal was a clear winner, right? With three questions. Yeah, so we had Ranjan get two uh, caps. Indra Malik got the first question and Anupam Ranjan Sahai. Three. Sorry? Ranjan three, I think. Ranjan two. Did he get two? three? I'm sorry. Oh, three, sorry. Three. Okay. Okay, Ranjan. All right. You got I'm putting my screen on just a sec. Yeah. And Addy. Yeah. Yeah. The slides should be on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, slides are on. So having survived the uh, the Zanskar, the three of us from that trip that's sit in one of his bandanas with his dark glasses. Sid, can you hear us or see us or talk to us? He says others have access. So yes. Sid, Weber, Addy, and me. Uh, so maybe the screen is slightly faint. This is right. Is it better now? The picture uh, slightly better. Not not too sharp. Not not very sharp at the moment. Uh, the pics are not sharp. Right, uh, could be the because of buffering. Okay, cool. Um, so for for the Siang, the Siang starts life in Tibet. I think as the uh, the Yarlung Changpo. Is that right, Weber? I get that right. The Sangpo, Yarlung Sangpo. The Yarlung Sangpo. So cutting through the eastern Himalayas, including a mountain called the Namche Barwa, uh, carries on through China and then finally enters India via Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, so again, one of the, and I think in all but name is Sadamaputra effectively, right? And I remember as, uh, when we reached, when we reached, uh, Padong, Padong was our jump off point. Uh, we started at Dibrugarh and we went, uh, Purung? We, uh, Purung. we stopped at Pasigat. Purung. So, Purung, yeah. So, start -off point, yes. so I remember at, at Purung, uh, our day two of Purung, Rana was grilling us on the river before we finally hit the rapids the next day. And he said, this isn't the Zanskar, your, your blades have to be vertical, you know, so that kind of, uh, the Siang is a, is a high volume river. It's, it's really, really broad, really wide. And depending on what the dams are doing at any one point in time, the water flow can, can change dramatically. So from Delhi, uh, at least I, and some of us, we flew into Dibrugarh. Uh, Dibrugarh is where we spent a day. We had a tribal dance in the hotel, a lovely sit down meal, uh, can we move to the tribal dance, Sumeru? What's 1B? And uh, we had about a, a four day journey from Dibrugarh to our jump off point of Purung. And it was really quite a trip. We were in a Jeep convoy, and the first part of it, uh, Sumeru, if you can order them in, in a name. Yeah, uh, because of numbers, uh, it goes. Yeah, up numbers? And down. No, because yeah, of the so numbers. Matthew yeah, so we could start with number two, possibly. Two yeah, is good. I'm just scrolling to them. Cool. So the first part of the trip was really our drive from Dibrugarh to uh, Big Wheel or the Bogey Wheel Ghat, 
and uh, the bogey wheel guard would take us uh, across the Brahmaputra uh, into the Arunachal Pradesh side of it. And I believe the bridge is up, Webb, now across that it, that crossing. It, it, it is the bridge is called Atal. It's it's it runs right across, and you can reach Pasigar in a single day. Now. Right. So I believe it's one of the largest uh, railroad bridges in Asia, if not the largest uh, railroad is. bridge. And uh, that crossing itself took us an hour to cross that river. And uh, I know that now, I mean, it's tremendously eased transport for everybody, but still it was quite a quite an experience across the river uh, at the Bogeyville Ghat. We can move on from there. Uh, we can move on quickly. And uh, yeah, move on, 3A, 3C, 3B, cool, cool. Cool. And uh, from from Bogeville, we moved on to Pasigat. Yeah, so Pasigat is so you can move to number six possibly, Sumeru. So Pasigat in Arunachal is where we had our last night really in a hotel. So we had a, a nice clean room with with nice beds, and we went walking around Pasigat in Arunachal, checked out the local fish market. I don't think we actually ate any of these fishes, but it was nice to walk around the market. Uh, on the road, so it's quite fascinating, but in the Second World War, this, this area was called the Hump. So air crews used to take off from, from Assam to bomb the Japanese forces in, in Myanmar. And because of the tricky terrain, a lot of those air crews actually crashed in these hills. You still have bombers being recovering in these hills, and you have families who are coming to these hills to try to you know, identify their loved ones or, or put, a, put a final resting place on their loved ones. That still goes on, Webber, you still find uh, is aircraft out there? Yes, we do. Yeah. In the hump? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just a little bit of World War II history. Uh, back on the road again. Uh, yeah, we can move back on Sumeru. So back on the road. Again, a lovely trip by the side of the Siang. And we're in this, in this Jeep convoy uh, all the way through all the four days of the trip. And now at the end of the trip where we reached, finally, that was Tooting. And Tooting now has an airstrip, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is that up and running for, for civilians also, Weber? Uh, uh, flights haven't started yet, but it's one of the big okay. seven big uh, airfields that, uh, you know, that are coming up in the Northeast. So very right. soon, it's a big airport. It is going to start operations. Pasigat has an airfield now and they, they are having some flights in now. Right. But I would miss that trip, you know, that I would miss that trip for what, for, for everything it, it, it took us through, uh, those four days on the road, it would be a, a disappointment really to fly into, to just fly into Tooting from, from Delhi via Dibrugad. Yeah. Uh, I remember that rest house at Jenging, and that was really quite a rest house. That, that loo was immortal. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and Rana had these stories really about parts of Arunachal where the Aquaterra crew would also not really uh, probably want to go, go, go near. Uh, so there are some parts or not just a little bit scary, Weber? Uh, no, uh, then, I think, not yeah, really. There, there might be less explored, uh, but no, uh, not scary. Maybe just just unexplored, and you know, um, uh, there are some right. places where there's not been much tourism, and and yes, so so yeah. Okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, and that was really a surreal moment on the on our road trip. We had this hot breakfast of idli and dosa at a military cantonment. One of the many military, uh, I think, cantonments who owe favors to, to Aquaterra for some reason or the other. And that's 21 of us on the trip uh, on, the, on the Siang from all, again, all parts of the world. Too many to name at this particular point. Uh, yeah. And that took us on finally to our jump off point, which was Purung. So Purung was our jump off point by the side of the Ningguing Rapid, probably a grade five or grade plus rapid, which we didn't uh, raft right at the beginning of the trip. So we had a couple of days at Purung to unwind uh, by the side of the river and just watch the rapid downstream. And on day two of our trip at Purung, we went into Tooting for a, for a half day trip. So that's the village, uh, that's the village Jeddo, I think, across the bridge from Tooting. That's correct, Weber? Jeddo? Yes, that is, yes. Yeah, so we uh, went to Tooting and absolutely stunning. And I, I've been to Bhutan in 2015 and, and this could give Bhutan very easily a run for its money. So I, I guess accessibility would make this part of India more, uh, more open for tourism. And uh, yeah. I can just see homestays coming up all around that, 
that valley all around Tooting, and it's a fascinating, absolutely fascinating place. In fact, we had one of our uh, our crew members, a guy called Anil Mutineni, who's in the Bay Area now, and Anil had taken a bus hike to Tooting several years ago. So I I have him even now on my on my contacts list as Anil Tooting for some reason, <laughs> for a good reason. So that's the river at Tooting, uh, and again another shot of the bridge, 17 and 17A, and our campsite, uh, the bridge across Tooting, that's sit across the bridge, our campsite there at Purung, and one final image of, of, yeah, Anu, are you there? Uh, can you? Unmute uh, yeah. Anusuya Saha. Yeah. Hello. Any memories of that? Any memories of that trip you want to share? Of the road trip and initial days. No, I days? remember when we set up camp and we went for a walk. And on the walk back, Kala and I found a guy selling uh, wild the pork. Well, wild we pork. Went? Yeah, we got uh, wild uh, pork meat. There was a guy walking, and then we like put it in the fire. <laughs> Well, I never got any to eat. I remember that. Of course, you got some to eat. Khan Singh put masala and put it in the uh, fireplace. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Anu. Uh, so that was quite a road trip, really, and, and really an, an unmissable part of the entire experience, that whole journey from Dibrugarh to Tooting. And uh, starting off uh, on the river, the first rapid we encountered was uh, Pulsating Pulsi, which is a grade four plus rapid. We didn't do the Ningguing, which was probably a grade five rapid because I think on, on best advice that uh, not a good rapid to start your, your trip with. And I believe back in 2014, there was a, a group of two rafts which uh, did a clean house both in Ningguing and Pulsi. And they swore never to raft again. Is that correct, Weber? Uh, yes, uh, our friend Ranjan is, uh, was part of that trip in uh, 2002. Uh, yeah, okay. we took a bit of a beating on unninging and Pulsi that year. Right, but clearly Ranjan uh, went back to raft again after that. So, so he's okay. Yeah, he, su he survived. And he's got three caps now. Yeah. Uh, so pulsating Pulsi was, uh, was quite a rapid. And... Uh, Again, day two on the Siang took us into the, the Marmong Gorge. Uh, again, these exotic names, Palsi, Marmong, Ningguing, just completely out of uh, fantasy terrain, you know. I can imagine Tolkien penning these names down somewhere. So back into the, Mar in the Marmong Gorge, and we had the Gorge Rapids. So Gorge Rapids, two and three, uh, we approached them with, with much trepidation, and they were quite formidable rapids. Uh, we got through them, fortunately, unscathed uh, from, our, from our experience. And uh, I think approaching each of these rapids from a, from a rafter's line perspective is, I think each rapid is different, right, Weber? In terms of how you approach them technically? Yeah so, yeah, so the Siang is extremely uh, deceptive because it's running at about, say, 60-odd thousand cubic feet per second. So, uh, there's no reference point because it's so large. The features are all very large, so you need to be, uh, you know, entering it at the right uh, at the right place. Because if you're boat length to the right or left, then you don't have much hope to move to maneuver very quickly. Right. So, yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, and after uh, after day two, we finally camped at a third rapid called Tooth Ferry. The so Tooth Ferry was a great five plus rapid and uh, really eerily named because it's really you, you're between a rock and a and a hard place so from what i believe grade six ranjan okay grade six and we were we did portage at tooth ferry we were in any case completely exhausted from our our day two uh, rafting and uh, tooth ferry was really fearsome rapid so we went to sleep lulled by the waves of the rapid uh, around the campfire and, and as sanjay one of our lead rafters said that was his his favorite place to camp by the side of the river so that's scenes of, of camping by the river. Uh, yeah, you can move on. That's Anu with Adi, Sid, and me. And we had enough time to, to yeah, that's right, Ranjan, that's mutiny, mutiny camp at Pango, I think, right? That was your trip? Okay, that's where the name came from. 
So enough, enough downtime and the beaches on the Siang were, were completely stunning. You know, we had a beach at the end called Paradise Beach, but I think that frankly, probably every in the Siang could be called Paradise Beach. Yeah. Uh, climatically also, we had the sun a fair amount beating down on us. So whenever we got wet, we had something to dry us out. And uh, that was lovely. So again, climatically very different from, from, the, from the Zanskar. Uh, more equitable, I'd say. The, it was a better climate and uh, a nice condition perspective. Okay, uh, moving on from there. I also remember we had some chickens on the raft till, till some point and until finally we didn't hear their cries anymore. So we were non veg for a while. Although Anu talks about the pork, which I never had. <laughs> uh, and we also had this guy who was selling fresh fish. So he came up to us on his boat and we got some, bought some fresh fish from him. And we had some nice fish uh, by the campfire that, that evening or that, that night. And we had a great fun bunch. There was Simon who was part of the crew. He was kayaking the entire trip and his wife had gifted him this experience for his 50th birthday. So Simon was, was the jokester and uh, Anil Muthineni was the pyromaniac. So not a good guy to, to have around a campsite, I guess, because he was setting everything on fires as whatever he could see. So a bit scary sometimes. Yeah. So we played some practical jokes on him. And uh, as you can see, uh, we moved on from there, day three and day four. Uh, you can move on from there, 23D. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful, the views. And that's Sanjay coming up. So Sanjay, let's hold that picture for a moment. I owe a tremendous debt to Sanjay. He was my lead rafter on both trips on the Zanskar and the Siang. And uh, touch wood, we didn't flip on both trips. He kept us safe. He kept the lines tight. A great guy to have around. And I would any day want to love to be back on a raft with him. Yeah, let's move on, Sumeru. More a little quickly, maybe. I've got a cocktail waiting at the end. Yeah, so that's uh, cocktail hour. Again, back by the beach. Uh, and chilling by the side of the river. Anu, how would you contrast the Subansari with the Siang? You've done both the rivers. Could you unmute uh, Anasuya, yeah. Sumeru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how would you contrast the Subansari with the Siang? So Subhatsari, I think, is a lot calmer. It doesn't have, you know, uh, but it does get really hectic in some places. Um, but the, the Subhatsari is a much smaller river, but it's very picturesque. But it also is more populated. I, uh, I mean, on the Siang, you wouldn't see anybody. On the Subhatsari, you would actually meet a lot more villagers. Okay. Um, yeah, but Subhansari is pretty in its own way. Just picturesque, it doesn't have this much volume, but it has some very nice rapids in like, you know, quite a few successions. So you don't have, uh, you don't have a big lull on the Subhansari. Ranjan is asking, how about rapids in the Subhansari? How are the rapids in comparison to the Siang, do you think? Uh, about four, three, four. I don't think it goes more than that. It wasn't anything. Okay. Okay. I mean, there was no so option of scouting anything, but it was just right. a nice, chilled river. Right, so right. was 11 days. Yeah, 11 days of which I think six days of uh, uh, right. rafting. And then there was one day, one time when we actually had the same thing. We had a sandstorm. It poured one night. So we actually had a rest day on a one day because it started raining. We couldn't pack up. Okay, so cool. We had a, so it was fun. Thanks, Anu. Uh, swimming on from there very quickly, we had some locals, as Anu also mentioned, they came down to the beach and they had these glass jars. So they were collecting these, these black beetles uh, as a protein snack and they offered us to them, but uh, that's something which we, which we resisted the temptation of. Uh, yeah. And moving on from there, we got gecko, uh, mowing madness, I think, mowing madness. And uh, finally, Tooth Fairy and Harry Hurry, named for a ski owner of the BPL family, who fortunately survived to run the business, I think. Finally, some body surfing in the river. And uh, yeah, so maybe you can move on quickly now. Yeah. Ponging was one big rapid before finally we had to stretch before lay. 
Yeah, okay, you can move on. That's record as rapid. Uh, thanks, Ranjan. Most of the picks aren't mine. Uh, some are from Sumeru and the Aquatera team, and some from Aditya Narayan, who's on this chat, and some from Siddharth Goyal also. And finally, journey's end. That's Simon in front, making a dash. That's the bunch, 21 of us, uh, unscathed by the river, back at the end. And yeah, you can move on quickly from there, Sumeru. Back on the bus, back to the uh, back to Bogiwil. Picked up some rice beer from Pasigat. Uh, Ranjan, no flips. We were touch wood, lucky, no flips. All good. We had a poem which Simon uh, had created called Brahma Be Good, and it's on the Aquatera Facebook page. A great poem, sung to the tune of Johnny Be Good. It was great fun. And yeah, Samir, I think you can move to the end now, and we'll move to the cocktail, if everybody is good. So that's the lyrics for uh, Brahma Be Good. And this is the 25th year of Aquaterra. Uh, congrats, Weber, and the entire Aquaterra crew. Uh, we at Talio have created a, a small cocktail called Atali Bliss. But before I, I make that, Weber, you want to say something about 25 years of Aquaterra? Well, so then uh, you can switch the cocktail. Well, uh, thanks, uh, Chanti. Uh, thanks, and uh, thanks for taking us through the. Uh, the cocktail. Yes, it's uh, it's been a quite a, quite a year. Our 25th. Never thought it would be a year like this. It's been a nothing year for so many of us. Uh, but I think we just need to be grateful for whatever is going on in the world, across the world, at this time. And yes, so uh, we hope travel is going to open up again, and uh, we're going to be able to have all of you coming back. Um, yeah, and thank you for joining us and handing over you back to uh, Chanti for the Atali Bliss. Thanks, Weber. Uh, so, Mary, can you switch the cocktail slide, please? Is is anybody making the cocktail with me? Okay. So, uh, I'm using a gin for this cocktail. It's called Apusa. It's a Himalayan Himalayan dry gin. It's made with juniper gathered from the Himalayas. So that's that's juniper. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't. Uh, no anupam, no alternate to pomegranate. And I'm taking my cocktail shaker, adding in some curry leaf. Adding in some lime juice. I'm adding in five mil of of sugar syrup. And 30 ml of pomegranate juice. And finally, mm -hmm. most importantly, the gin. So hapusa gin. Forty-five ml of gin and I'm going to take up this cocktail. But before that, I have a martini glass uh, rimmed with some Himalayan pink salt and.
Uh, yeah, Anu, you can use cranberry juice. Abu, you have your drink? Uh, no, uh, but I've got some water. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers to Aquaterra. Cheers, Abu. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you so much for uh, coming with us on a Sunday journey. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Chanti. Thank you, Sumeru. Thank you, Adi, Anu, Sid. Thank you, everyone. And uh, Please send us your addresses, winners, and we'll send you uh, the hats out. In case yeah. any of our attendees would like to say something, you can send me a message. Uh, I can make you a panelist, and we can have you on video uh, as well. So you can let us know if you'd like to come on for a little while. Uh, no messages till now, so I guess. Uh, uh, I think Sunil had a question. Yeah. So if you can just throw in our questions again, uh, so we can just quickly answer them. Uh, when is the next one coming? Srinivas uh, is asking Vavit. Uh, so yeah, we we are hoping that uh, we should be able to uh, you know run all our trips starting late August September. And uh, so, yes, we're, uh, we're still hoping our Siang trip goes. I, we may, may not be in time for the Zanskar this year, but I think on November, Siang and Subansari in the, in the Northeast, uh, Arunachal Pradesh will go. All right. And uh, Indira, I'm just going to type out the uh, email address. You can send us your, uh, uh, your address and we'll uh, send you the hat out ASAP. I've just put it on the chat. All right. So, uh, any more questions, folks? Okay. So, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you uh, for coming out this Sunday, and we hope to see you back in the mountains soon. All right. So, uh, if anyone would like to see this uh, chat again, it'll be up on our Facebook page uh, as well at the moment, and you can always tune back uh, and see anything. You want? Thank you, everyone. I'll be ending this. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thanks. Thank you, Chanti. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, thank you, Thanks, Thanks, Anu. Thanks, 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 Matthew.